It's Tuesday, the fourth day of October 2022. Like we're saying, it's like that. Fourth, then tenth, then twentieth, then twelfth December. Then music Feliz Navidad. Quisha. It's over. Quisha. City's favorite holiday. Mm. Abi? The one that starts with Mondi. <laughs> the what? That's Easter. <laughs> that's his favorite holiday it's this other one, one is not it's that one which comes with the song the mm. first day of christmas maybe that's actually christmas that one that's the one eh? yeah oh the one for songs mm. the other one, the one for music. music i like that particular song first day of christmas my baby said to me true, true love is the word you're looking for <laughs> thank you daisy <laughs> 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 my baby wow <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> baby <laughs> baby <laughs> hey <laughs> <laughs> Living properly on brand, CT Muga. <laughs> Give us the day's proverb. Right. Mm. Who would tell the lion that his breath stinks? Baby. <laughs> Baby. There's a way. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. This one is from uh, Libya again. Where's it in Libya? We're going to be in Libya for a while, mm. next few days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think they're saying, though? What are they? What are they implying? <laughs> what is it that the was there saying? They are saying mm. what the our relatives in the West said mm. regarding a king uh -huh. who's walking stark naked, mm -hmm. and no one would tell the king mm -hmm. that they were walking stark naked mm -hmm. because they were the king. So nobody would dare. Yes, who would dare? It's the same fellow, so the same relatives asked, who will bell the cat? Yes. Yes. Who? Well, that's the story that the, the human being said about mice yeah. and rats. But I don't know if the mice have a similar saying about human beings. I think they would say, who would tell the lion that the breath stinks? Mm. That's rats telling human beings. Mm. You think you're going to tell the lion that your breath stinks? Yeah. Well, yeah. now that you feel that you're home, Juaji. Yes, telling us <laughs> to go and build a cat. <laughs> go and tell the lion. Daisy Mdani is the executive director of the Community Advocacy and Awareness, Crown Trust. Good morning, Daisy. Good morning, Eric. Welcome back to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Thank you. Good to have you again. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. When you hear this uh, Libyan saying and, and coming up with this proverb, what, what, what's your translation of this? Uh, for me, my translation is, who will speak truth to power? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. And who is it? I must be very, very daring. Well, you've got to be daring to speak truth to power. Yeah. Because most people fear power. Mm. Um, you, a lot of people are afraid. You always want to sing praises. You know, even sometimes, you know, when you look in the Bible... Uh, when they approached the king, they always started with, Oh, king, may you live forever. Oh, you yes. Know? <laughs> uh, so it's always, um, the, 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 the king is always praiseworthy. Mm. The leader is always praiseworthy. So those who are seen to speak truth, and of course, truth means, you know, speaking out when they do wrong, mm -hmm. uh, pointing out, you know, violations, when they do violate, mm -hmm. because it is always presumed that the king is always right. Yeah. So the leader is always right. So that is how I would interpret it. Okay. Walked right into that one, right, didn't you? It's like you and City had arranged. Yeah. So tomorrow I'm coming, and please have a proverb that, like uh, that fits the topic. Because yeah. Daisy is here today to ask, where are the 50% women in cabinet, as had been promised? Who promised this? Well, the then candidate mm. uh, for Kenya Kwanzaa, uh, uh, now president, William Ruto, made that commitment. Uh, initially, he had said, I don't know if it was a promise, but he had said that he was going to have a female running mate. Mm -hmm. And you could see, I mean, I think uh, that's one of the things that came out of the just concluded election is that uh, female running mates were an in thing. Mm. In fact, he was the only one running with a male uh, deputy. Mm -hmm. But initially he had suggested that he was uh, looking to have a female running mate. 
But then when he signed the charter, remember he has signed, he signed charters with several different groups. Yes. And among them was the women's charter. Mm -hmm. One of the things that he said and he committed himself to was that he was going to ensure that 50% of his cabinet were mm. going to be female. Mm. And so that's why I'm asking, where are they? Um, I listened in <laughs> to your conversation and I've been hearing a lot of people. Mm. In fact, uh, on the day um, that the cabinet was uh, announced, the nominees for cabinet, mm. I wasn't actually in town. Mm. And so when I came now into town, into town, into <laughs> network, mm. hey, my phone was eh? Mm. And they were, some were saying, mm. hey, finally we have gotten the 50-50. Others were like, whoa, he has lied to us. Again. And, you know, and mm -hmm. I was like, hey, Connie, what is going on? So, of course, when I settled down, I looked, I said, okay, this is where we are. Mm. At first, I felt a bit demoralized because mm. I was like, ah, no, we, this thing again, this thing again, you know, because... Remember that uh, with President Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, now retired, mm. first administration elected under the new constitution, yep. this was a running battle. Mm. The implementation of the two-thirds. Uh, we sued on cabinet, mm -hmm. composition of cabinet. Mm -hmm. We got a favorable judgment, which of course was ignored because you remember that that was one of, <laughs> one, one, one of the highlights of his, uh, or should I say lowlights of the, his presidency was that he really simply ignored court orders. Uh, what, what was the order of the court? The order of the court. So you recall that uh, he sh reshuffled his cabinet uh, just before the general elections, or at least a year, a year before mm. he reorganized his cabinet. Yes. And he let... Uh, certain people go. Remember, there are others who went for lighter duties, yep. and uh, you know they they let go. So we had quite we had uh, uh, women dropped from the cabinet, yep. uh, but he replaced them all with men. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, we went to court. Marilyn, the court. I think the case is um, five sixty six of twenty twelve, mm. um, and. Uh, the court ruled that indeed the cabinet was not properly constituted and that the president was duty bound to reconstitute his cabinet. However, yes. uh, Justice Onguto uh, said that because elections were coming up, status quo should remain. Mm. Uh, but if he chose to reshuffle cabinet before the elections, he must ensure that it meets the two-thirds gender principle. Mm -hmm. So he didn't. In fact, even when he reconstituted <coughs> cabinet in after 2017, yeah. it absolutely did not meet that threshold. Okay. So so this is this has been a, an issue about the, the composition of cabinet in terms of meeting the two-thirds two gender principle. Gender. Now, this one by President William Ruto. Mm -hmm. We have seven. Yes. Women cabinet yes. secretaries yes. who have been appointed yes. out of 22 yes. ministers. Yes. Um, mm, uh -huh. So, uh, <laughs> even even if you were to just count the cabinet secretaries, yes. right? Yes. Um, as the 22, because the composition of cabinet is actually very clear. In Article 152, it actually spells out what the composition of cabinet is. I shall read. Yes. Article 152, 1. The cabinet consists of A, the president, mm -hmm. B, the deputy president, C, the attorney general, and D, not fewer than 14 and not more than 22 cabinet secretaries. Okay. So cabinet is made up, includes the president and his deputy and the AG. Yes. So technically, cabinet, if you go for the full count of 25. 22, is 25. Yes. Right? So the thing here is... The, the principle in Article 28, mm. uh, 27.8, is not more than two-thirds. It is not a principle of looking for a third. It's mm. about not more than two-thirds. So if you were to calculate what two-thirds of 25 is, what is two-thirds of 25? It's eight yes. points. <laughs> <laughs> because right mm -hmm. now, if you look... At the count, you take the numbers of the male, the male members of cabinet, mm. including the president mm. and the, CS, the CS nominees. They make up 18. They come to 18, 18 members, yep. right? Yep. 
That 18... Two-thirds of 25 is 17. 17. 17, mm. right? Uh, so, you have 18 members, mm -hmm. which means that... It is more than two-thirds. It's more than two-thirds, uh -huh. okay? Even if you were to take it at a lower count, right, of, of um, the 15 uh -huh. that are there. Sindio, mm -hmm. so uh -huh. it's 15 men, yeah? Yes? Mm -hmm. It still comes up to more than two-thirds because it's 68%. 68.1%, mm. okay? So that's more than two-thirds, right? The thing is, you cannot have more than two-thirds of the same gender. So it's really just a numbers thing. This is not legislation. This is counting. And uh, this is the thing that I say. It, it seems that when it comes to elections and when it comes to appointing women, mm. somehow in Kenya, they cannot count. It falls to the women's rights organizations and the courts to, to do show, the counting. To, to show people how to count. Mm -hmm. So the cabinet as presently constituted, if you were to take the the, the numbers that they that they have right now, yeah. Yeah. You have um, the fifteen CSs, mm -hmm. male CSs, who make up sixty eight percent automatically tells you that the cabinet is not two-thirds. When it comes to now adding the total number, the 25, it actually comes to 72%. Okay? Mm. So that's more than two-thirds, mm. right? Which means that they are in breach of the constitutional principle. Already? From, Already. from the get-go? Yes. Okay. But, but <clears throat> it also there's also this um, effort. There was an effort which I would say is... You know, I, I, want, I need to be careful with my words because so there are people who do not take very kindly to belling the cat. Mm -hmm. But I would call it an act of deception because there are offices that were mentioned that actually do not exist. Yeah. So there were cabinet nominees that were named and then there was this what is called cabinet level appointments. Yeah. And it's not clear what these are. Because... What do you mean it's not clear? They're advisors. They've been named. Yes, but advisors National are not... National Security Advisor. But cabinet... That's not cabinet level. Mm. Advisors are perfectly in order. They, they, it just means they don't have a vote in cabinet. Exactly. they'll advise the cabinet. Exactly. But yeah. by calling them... But you see, the idea here was, if you take the 22 count, right? Yeah. You take the seven... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. You take the seven women, nominees. women mm -hmm. and then you take these three cabinet level appointees. It brings you to 10. Mm. So what does it look like? It, it looks, looks like, like you got half. Exactly. That is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That That is a hoodwink. You know, it is Kifunga Macho to tell us that you see i've given you 50 50. Mm. I, i've given you half or oh, almost half mm. because anyway half still of what ten, though i mean exactly but it, if you add those uh two nominee uh, advisor positions mm. the advisor on gender and the advisor on national security because mm. the other one is a secretary of the cabinet anyway mm -hmm. an office that exists an office that exists yes and it is not and it's, it's not, not, it's not a, you're not a cabinet secretary it's an office that exists but you're not a cabinet secretary yeah uh, an advisor is exactly that. An advisor, you're not a policy maker. There's a very big difference because a cabinet secretary sits at policy making level. Mm -hmm. Okay? Advisors do not. Mm. You advise. You can take my advice, you can That's leave it. You. Yep. you know. So sometimes you can even be very ineffective, you know, because you may continually advise your client and your client continually. Does they please. Exactly. Mm. You know, and then we will be looking and saying, but Ndu, how does she advise this mm. uh, client? Mm. You know, uh, so th th that for me is the hoodwink, you know, and I and I think that it's unfair. <coughs> it is unfair that at this that that we're talking 12 years post promulgation because, you know, um, when we when when Kenyans promulgated a new constitution, it was actually. Uh, 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 signifying a break with the past. Number one, you don't want this, you know, heavy executive, mm. you know, bloated executive, right? Mm. There are certain things that Kenyans said that they wanted to see. A lean and efficient executive, mm -hmm. you know, that, that actually has, that, that reflects the face of the country, mm. the ethnic and regional composition of, of the country, which is now the other violation. Because the cabinet, the cabinet nominees do not reflect 
the ethnic diversity mm -hmm. of our country. In fact, that's, for me, you know, those are some of the things that you look and you begin to understand the frustrations of other people because it's almost like a, a, a communication that others are not worthy, you know, of these positions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's unfair. Mm -hmm. It is unfair. What's the, I mean, look, it, I mean, you said something interesting that, look, it, 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 met, it, it was hoped that at 2010, uh, with this new constitution, that there were certain things that then would have been left behind. Mm. Do, do you l look at now these appointments really saying that there is still a problem with giving, and we're just going to deal with the gender issue now, mm. is there an inherent problem with giving or, or, or vesting faith and hope in women to be able to deliver at that level? Is there a problem? I, first of all, I don't think that there's a problem in, in women being able to deliver. Oh, no, no, no. But in, in, in being able to make the decision to hand over the reins of power to them. Yes, I mm -hmm. do think there is. I think that our system, our, our political systems and our, our po political leaders remain resistant to the idea of women in leadership because they are the ones tasked with that responsibility. It is the president because the president is the one who appoints his cabinet, he chooses the people who will, 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 you know, govern with him as it were at the executive mm. level. Mm. Okay. However, the constitution is prescriptive in that it requires that in doing so, you must ensure one, not more than two thirds of the same gender. Yes. Two, that your cabinet reflects the regional and ethnic diversity of our country yes. and that you can have no more than 22 cabinet secretaries. So it's very prescriptive in that, in that, you know, in, mm -hmm. in that regard. Mm -hmm. So now when you come along and you decide that you're not then going to abide by those principles, that is actually an act of lawlessness because the, 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 the dictator here is the constitution. It is not you. Mm. You come in and you must remember that that the, the, the power of the executive derives from the people of Kenya. So even if you win an election, it's not that I've won, therefore I'm the one who sets the rules. The rules have already been set by the people of Kenya. And they say at any given time, when we have a president, this is what we want to see. We want to see you governing in such a manner. You okay? Mm -hmm. And so when we don't see that, it's actually a violation. It is a violation. So when you don't meet the requirements of the law, what then do we say? Because the law requires not more than two thirds. You haven't met that. Mm. Uh, it requires regional and ethnic diversity. It does not reflect that. That, that is a violation of the constitution. Mm. The other thing is, even though the, 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 the constitution doesn't expressly speak to it with regards to cabinet, mm. but there are no youth. There was no youth. And yet, uh, one of his strongest, one of uh, President Ruto's strongest base was the youth. Mm -hmm. So even one place for a youth or a person with disabilities, because these are, this is the face of Kenya. That mm -hmm. is actually the face of Kenya. In Kenya, we have young people. In fact, the largest population in this country are young people. Mm -hmm. And we do have a marginalized group. Must they all be in cabinets? They, listen. Or can there be considerations or have got a 25 maximum member cabinet mm -hmm. and then i have principal secretaries and they have been given leeway because i can create how many state departments i want now he has how many 48 plus one mm -hmm. so and then now he's also waiting for the recommendation from the uh, Pal uh, public service commission which he has sought for to uh, create the position of the chief administrative secretary which there's no limit so maybe which is, uh, which is which is also another problem. Uh, we'll deal with that. <laughs> so with if you look at the PSAs and the CSAs, yeah, right? So you could say that he still has leeway to actually reflect the face of Kenya in all shapes and forms. I, I agree. Youth, I agree. Women, yes, with the PSAs, disability, I agree. Everybody, the face of Kenya, regional, yes. uh, tribal, county balance. Even if you want counties, we can even put them somebody from each county of the republic true uh -huh. he can so he has the leeway mm. with the ps's definitely 
And uh, the CASs. Well, personally, I personally I object to the idea of CASs. Mm -hmm. Um, mainly have you because sent your, you have two days to Yes, actually we've already objection. developed our memorandum you as the National day. Women's Steering Committee. So mm -hmm. uh, we have members looking at it and giving their input, but uh, it will be in before the 6th, definitely. But generally, and I don't think, I, I've yet to hear anyone, by the way, mm -hmm. supporting the idea of CASs, mainly because of one, you know, it's also important to go back to where we came from. When you go back to the constitution review making process, there are certain things that Kenyans said they did not want. And remember at that time when the constitution was being reviewed, we had a government of nearly 100 people. Because remember it was Serekali Amseto. Yeah. Right. It had minister for public and minister for health, minister for water and minister for sewerage, assistant minister for this. Yani, so the, it was just bloated a bloated yeah. executive. Mm. Yep. And one of the things that Kenyans really insisted, we don't want this bloated executive, right? And, in fact, among uh, uh, the key issues that they really objected to was this thing of assistant ministers. Because they felt that they were actually created to reward political cronies. Yeah. Okay? So, when then, um, when the, the, then the president uses... Well, means, his ways and means. Tools within his disposal. Well, t well actually, by the way, <laughs> if you actually look at the provisions of the Constitution, it actually says that the recommendation, the president can request, but a recommendation must come from the Public mm. Service Commission, yeah. and the Public Service Commission must show how that role mm. is necessary. It will not duplicate the roles of, uh, you know, other existing, uh, of other officers. existing officers. And also it must ensure prudent use of our resources. Now, when you look at the roles that have been spelt out, because when the PSC called for um, public participation, and by the way, you know, for, for the president, now he's doing it, you know, President Uhuru, just appointed them without any public participation. And actually the courts ruled that it was unconstitutional, that the position was unconstitutionally mm. created. Mm. Never mind, they continued. So now uh, President Ruto is sealing those gaps, calling for public participation, and they've spelt out the roles. So among those roles are some of the roles that belong to cabinet secretaries, mm. you know, liaison with the, the parliament and every, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, Senate concurrent roles, you know, with county um, personnel and all that. However, when you look at the call, the uh, Nini, um, PSC did not indicate what it would cost because the constitution requires that they must spell out what the cost to the public wage bill will be to have those positions. Mm. They have not done that. They have not shown how this position is actually necessary. That this position of CS is so weighty that and 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 the PS is not carrying that enough weight that when I told you say dizzy a CAS. Daisy, so you just relax. I want to give you one acre of land. <laughs> oh. Thank you. To calm you down, okay? <laughs> Land just does just that. It's really it for everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Chana na cabinet, chukua shamba. Lakini it's sa. It's better. No, we chukua shamba. Money of the box. <laughs> I, I don't even know. This is one of those <laughs> decisions. Shamba ya mstuni. Ni tiyo shamba ya mstuni. Ha tuingi mstuni tamamari. Ni shamba ya forest. Ni shamba ya, si anasi ya mawe. No, no, ni shamba ya mawe. Ni shamba ya farm. Ni shamba ya farm. Okay. Proper one acre. Yeah. Huh? All you need to do mm. is send the word shamba to SMS 40299. Gosh. 40299. Send the word shamba. Then you will be shown by AMG Realtors the areas where they have pieces of land. They have land in Juja, in Kangundo Road, Nanyuki, Naivasha, Nakuru, Kikuyu, Malindi. And they sell these pieces of land. What AMG Realtors do is they go, they buy land from City Muga, mm. who sold me a piece of rock and called it land. Mm -hmm. And then what they do the proper due he diligence, said he unlike Eric. Something elevated from which he could see from. <laughs> Unfortunately, it also had rock. Now, surely. <laughs> unlike me, AMG Realtors will actually visit that piece of land, ensure that it is actually a valuable piece of land. They're They'll buy from they city. Own. They'll get their title deed into their name. Clean clean and then now they advertise for sale so all these places that they are selling land in juja kangundo road nanyuki naivasha nakuru kikuyu malindi it's amg registered land 
for as low as 150,000 shillings per piece of land to depending on the size and the location 4.7 million shillings per piece of land if you spend any amount above uh, 50,000 shillings as 150,000 shillings gives you three entries that means every 50,000 shillings is an entry to a draw so the bigger the piece of land you buy the more your chances the of winning more your chances, kind of thing. the I more your like chances it. of winning <laughs> and you get a um, one acre draw is happening in six days time on that day what what's that day called again huduma day huduma day on huduma day the 10th of october there'll be a draw yeah, yes yeah, yeah. and that's the day you win a piece of land just text the word shamba to 402999 daisy amdany is the executive director of community advocacy and awareness it's called crown trust crown. Crown. Yes, pronounced crown. Ah, surely. Yes, it's pronounced crown. Crown trust. Crown trust. Mm -hmm. She's here and she's asking where the women in cabinet. Mm. The They're promise there. was to, to have 50%. Where, where the are more they? of them? The law says yes. not more than two-thirds. How come we have more than two-thirds of one gender in this cabinet that has been nominated by the president? Mm. And we're just here telling her, calm down. No, just no, sure. Relax. We'll be back after this break. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. We are talking about the composition of cabinet. Uh, Winters, I love the way Daisy is factual. A reclative body language, though, speechless. <laughs> Me, I'm just here wondering, guy, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, the president made the appointments. 22 members of the cabinet plus the attorney general, the deputy president, and the president makes it 25. Out of the 25, seven are women. And Daisy, you say that already just by a casual glance and 0 0.01 mathematics uh -huh. is <laughs> out. It is less than one third. Mm -hmm. okay. No, less, it's, it's more, more than, than two thirds. thirds. Mm. It's not the one third we should be looking at. It's the more, it than, is more two than two thirds. thirds. Exactly. Yes. It's the same. No, no, it's no, not. no, no, no. Actually, it's, very it's not. It's very different. It's the same as Abu. Mm. Mm. And, and that's if you have more than one third, then you have less than two thirds. And that is how people used to play this card game. Mm -hmm. And because, that's exactly how they played. Right. Because more than two thirds is not the same thing mm -hmm. as having one third. It is not. Because if you were to calculate... You know these people? This is math, okay? No, L look at... <laughs> this okay. is math. It is. Daisy, you've it changed is. your mind. Two thirds no, no, no. plus one third is maths. a whole. No, listen. If we were to do the math, let's do the math. Yes. 22. Who's good at maths? 22. My calculator. So 15. So what is 15? What is what is 15? Or rather, what is what is two thirds what of twenty two? What is a third of twenty five? No, what is two thirds of twenty two? Two thirds of twenty two will, will give you fourteen. It, no, it will give you fourteen point six six. Abu, do the math. Point mm -hmm. six six something. Why are you working with twenty two? Because that's the number of cabinet ministers, cabinet secretaries. Two thirds of oh. twenty two is fifteen. Correct. N no, it is not. Fourteen point six. Exactly. Now fourteen point six. So mm. mathematically, we have been told that when you have anything. Point, from point 0.5 upwards, you round Not off to the highest. upper number. Yes. However, if you round up to the upper number, you automatically get more than two-thirds, mm. right? So you would have to automatically calculate it downwards but this you is to not decide what decide whether done. you want to deal with fractions or decimals no it is Shall because you can't have 0.6 <laughs> of a person if we deal with fractions no you can't ha you can't two have two third mm. is two third stop talking about two third being zero point let's Th just deal with fractions two thirds mm -hmm. okay so do the math on the fraction it is uh, in violation of two thirds yes it is it's in violation of the one third it's in violation. The, the principle is two thirds. Yes. Not the one third principle. Sour. It's the two thirds principle. The cabinet, as has been nominated by the president, is in violation of, of the two, two -thirds, thirds gender of principle. Of the not more than two thirds gender principle. There you go. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. There are some extra two members who have been uh, nominated. Mm. And they are called cabinet level appointments appointments they were nom they were appointed three but one exists one in, exists one in, is a secretary in, to the cabinet exactly is an office that exists yes so the two others are uh, one is a women rights agency yes and the other one is a national security advisor mm -hmm. both are women and both are not in cabinet push the, the number of those two 
if you say that they will even be attending cabinet meetings, blah blah blah, are like Rafael Tuju was. Would you say what is what are cabinet level appointments? Let's start there. W what are those? Because the 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 constitution does actually not provide not, for that. Does not There's nothing. It. You know, you can't expand cabinet by fiat. You can't. You can't decide. I have cabinet secretaries, then I have cabinet level appointments. What are those? They'll those are not cabinet room, ministers. Observing. But there's nothing. You know, you can. The, the law allows like it, the like president the to of, have advisors. Like in the game of volleyball. They're called liberal. By the way, the, the law workouts. allows the president to have advisors yes. and to appoint as many as he should find fit. He can have them. Mm. But they are not cabinet level. True. And by the way, the Women's Rights Agency is also one of the fulfillment of his promises because he said he was going to have an agency that was within his office that would deal with issues of gender-based violence and violence against women. Mm -hmm. So he has fulfilled that in the Women's Rights Agency. However, it is not a cabinet level appointment because there's no such thing. It doesn't exist. Okay. Right? Okay. All right. So it's important for us to say that, Mr. President, you have not fulfilled your your commitment yeah. to women with regards to your promise mm -hmm. and the charter, mm -hmm. and you have also you are also in violation of the constitution because your cabinet consists of more than two thirds of the same gender. Okay. We are very excited about the women. We love them. We are happy. We will work with them, but we need more. So maybe he can move the cabinet level appointments to cabinet. And move some men to the cabinet level appointments. Uh, okay of advisors. That. that would be all right too, that isn't it? That would be fine. Okay. Let's look at the spirit of the decision. And I, I personally said that I was encouraged that there was the retaining of the uh, ministry, which then would hold the gender commission and all yes. of this. I was very excited about that because then I saw that there was a commi commitment to further entrench uh, women's issues into governance Absolutely. issue and policy. Absolutely. Is it? enough to see that or are we saying that your intent or that your interest is only further cemented if we actually see these women put into positions of cabinet secretaries is is it does it cement it any further does it show your commitment more than if you didn't first of all i think having a substantive cabinet office that deals with women and gender issues, yeah. powerful. That's right. something that we've always fought for. Mm -hmm. And it's always something that has been relegated, you know, to the background. So we're happy yeah. with that, okay? Mm -hmm. Happy with his commitment to honor, honoring his commitment to the, the, the Women's Rights Agency. Mm -hmm. However, I don't want us to confuse issues. Mm -hmm. This is not about women per se. It's about the rule of law. Okay, mm. the constitution prescribes numbers. Literally, it gives numbers. Honor the constitution. Honor those numbers. You, they have enough women. Kenya Kwanzaa has more than enough women to fill in these seats. Okay, so you can't tell me because, I mean, you can't say that they don't have enough women. This is literally, you see, by by. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't want I don't want to be excited about um, the women being there, but not in the required numbers. Okay. You get mm. because it's almost like saying it's OK to violate the Constitution when it comes to women. Right. Because even the hoodwink of cabinet level appointments, then you bring women into that. You know, you create as a, 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 a level that doesn't exist. And then you put women there, you know, so it's like it's OK to 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 violate the Constitution when it comes to bringing women in. But then you also violate it um, or hoodwink to then bring women in. But has he violated the Constitution by appointing these women? Really? Listen, <laughs> if it is if you are calling it if you're calling it cabinet level appointments, mm. that does not exist. But, but uh, has City, let me ask you. No, <laughs> please first tell me what is a cabinet level appointment? See, see a cabinet secretary without portfolio like the one we had before. Cabinet cabinet level appointment is cabinet secretary. Thank you. So yes. when you say now the constitution prescribes the numbers, it says you can have no more than twenty two. Not less than fourteen. Not more than twenty two. Yes. Okay. So if you have then cabinet level appointments 
where are you where are you putting where these other fit? two? You've already who are they? You've already fixed your number to mm. twenty two, yes. right? Yes. And then now you've brought another two. Yes. And you're saying these are cabinet level appointments. Did so he, essentially, he, you are making say, cabinet. Did he say so? Yes. What did he say exactly? He said cabinet level the appointments. Yes, level. <laughs> level. He didn't say the. Uh, so he didn't now, say cabinet based appointments. on that, based on what that, is, okay. First, explain to me. Maybe you understand better. What are cabinet level appointments? Oh no, no, no. Listen, mm. I understand your discussion, and I understand the position you're taking. Is it that I don't understand it? So, so what we're saying is that that uh, those additional two that have been given those cabinet level appointments then cannot contribute to the total tally of these women that we are saying exactly. should have been appointed as cabinet secretaries. They cannot be counted in the tally. Even that one I've gotten. Yeah. Mm. So you're asking, is it in violation? Then yes. It it's is. in violation. Mm. Okay. I was actually going with the violation. Mm -hmm. So then, if you look at the appointment of, say, the men mm. in that cabinet, mm. are there not some individuals there whose well-being has somehow collided with chapter 6 at some point or the other let me tell you <laughs> the battle of chapter 6 was lost when uh, in 2012 the courts ruled that the ICC indictees could vie for the presidency for as long as they had not been convicted mm -hmm. and it's been downhill all the way so for me on the issue of chapter 6 it's it, the, the courts it's have moot. already Just it is leave it you it have is, no power to you are, you are innocent until a judge is guilty. And it also doesn't help. Even when you are judged also, guilty, my friend. And, and it also <laughs> doesn't help that the previous government also used the criminal justice system as a political tool. Right? So are we therefore saying that what in effect has happened is that with that pronouncement, case law and the reference point became this. That so long as you haven't been pronounced guilty. Mm. You are innocent. Do you know how many people in parliament, how many members of parliament have active criminal cases? We have I all have of one. them. Sorry, we have, we have one, one, who one has right been now who has guilty. already been pronounced guilty. He has been sentenced and right now is gunning to be uh, a, a, member, of a member of the Service PSC. Commission. Come on. So, so, so you know, as in... <laughs> As in, this is a battle we are we are actively losing. Okay, you know? and it seems like you're losing even this other one. No, th of that's cabinet. The, well, last the, time you went to court in 2015. You know, the courts have not. The courts did not at have not at any time mm. ruled that it's okay to be in violation. With chapter six, the courts have ruled that these persons are innocent until proven guilty. Yes. Okay. With the two-thirds gender principle, yes. the president, Uhuru Kenyatta, was found to be in violation of the constitution. Yes. Cabinet was found to be unconstitutional. In fact, our prayers, it's just that some prayers were not uh, you know, given to us because we said that every decision of that cabinet should be voided because an unconstitutional body cannot and yet make constitutional. And See Chief Justice saying. Emeritus actually made the suggestion to the president to, to dissolve, dissolve parliament, parliament based so on that. And we've had, we've had, we've had that you success. To be losing. No, we're not losing. We're losing the on the ground that... Themselves. But you're not getting what you're seeking. Because of impunity. That's what I'm saying. You're but losing. that's not for so me, I wouldn't call today. it losing. Here I would say today, that Daisy. it is it is that our our leaders mm. are steeped in impunity. And by you, by the way, I don't mean you. Yes, and, I know, and the I know. Yes. Meaning that we Kenyans. Kenyans. If we are where we are today, we had a cabinet that sat for nine years mm. and at no point did it meet <laughs> two the two thirds gender principle. We had a parliament that served. That's one went home. Yeah. Another one came in. It went home. It didn't meet. This one has not met. And we're not even talking about them. We're already talking about, okay, so... Mr. President there. said 90 days. And, oh, you know, we are holding him to it. So, you know, there are promises he made. He said within 90 days. There are how many days in? I don't know. Is the four president days? No, does no. not elect people. No, no. He said within the, 90 days, the, 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 the two-thirds gender principle law would be... The president is not the head of the... Uh, the, the legislature. He has no say or no the legislature does. Uh, if the legislature, he doesn't in law. He doesn't control. The, well, you know, remember if we the saw legislature very differently has in, uh, not passed a law that deals with the issue of the agenda. Eric, if you Kenyans you went and voted and they sent people to parliament and all 345 of them, 49 of them 
do not meet the threshold. Mm. Kenyans should be told to go back and do their job. Actually, the, the, the dissolution order remains live. We must remember yeah. that uh, parliament is a body that exists in perpetuity. In perpetuity. So the, d d dissolve, the, the, order, the advisory for the dissolution of parliament was not at the, for the 12th parliament. It was for parliament. So, as, so the, currently, as we, as we are, the 13th parliament has no cover of the law. So it is actually unconstitutional. It has no cover of the law. The only parliament that the had the cover of the law, of the law, not the only the parliament, parliament that had the cover of the law to sit being improperly constituted was the 11th was the parliament. Yeah. Uh, because there was the, they were told by 2015, the law needed to be in place. All other parliaments after that have been in violation of the two thirds. Hence, Maraga's order for the dissolution of parliament for its failure to enact the necessary legislation. So their failure basically to do their job because that's the Are job of parliament. Are you saying, Daisy, that nobody needs to go to court now? No, the dissolution order is there. All we need to do is to go and remind, remind, remind uh, the, the courts that, uh, please, we have an unconstitutional body in sitting, you know, the 13th parliament. It is and unconstitutional. And they're going to be going so about their they business, can, yes. which would be, again, unconstitutional. Even, even to receive, right now, given that the president has nominated persons to uh, cabinet and the, ca the, the numbers do not meet the two-thirds uh, principle, parliament actually ideally should return the list to the president and tell him to reconstitute it, okay? No. That is actually what Give the us speaker... Give a legal list. That is Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker should encourage the president. Mr. President, mm. you're, 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 as, as, as it's... It's mandate, mm. right? Because they have a responsibility to oversight the executive and ensure that the executive mm. operates within the confines of the law. So, Mr. Speaker should actually uh, let Mr. President know that actually your list violates the two-thirds gender principle. They can also take up maybe some of the Chapter 6 issues if they wish, but that is now the role of Parliament. However, are we confident that they would do that? I don't think so. Why? You see, Eric mentioned something which I think is pertinent to this discussion, and that is that the president doesn't really have a say in what happens in parliament. That statement is not, a, it's not really true. Well, Our presidents have a huge say hey, in yes, what happens. They have influence. In. And they shouldn't. Oh, if no, you no. have speakers, if you have, have a speaker, if you have a speaker have no who understands their role, they will hold the executive see, to account. But unfortunately... We our, have had our, speakers our who have not, a speaker who has not. Our presidents also happen to be leaders of political parties. Yes. And it's these political parties that all these gentlemen and ladies who are in parliament belong to. Yes. So it's like telling me that if the speaker of the National Assembly belongs to the president's party, mm. that he would dare. If he is, if it, because at this point, as a speaker, he's no longer supposed to be partisan you think he they understand that no they should <laughs> i think they do they should well, like they now do. our current totally speaker is a seasoned politician a seasoned legislator and he's a lawyer so oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just saying i'm just saying you know, CT, what again? you know for me i'm just going to look Bottom to line, the, look to the politician. best <laughs> look to the look look to the ideal so ideally the pr the speaker once you sit in that seat mm. your 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 allegiance is to the constitution and to the people of kenya including by the way do you do do, ha, do do you know we were all fixated by the whole process did you actually listen to the oath of office mm. they actually the oath of office they bear true allegiance to what the constitution not the to Republic my party not to partisan views and any of that they are supposed to abide by the constitution, and represent the will of the people of Kenya. Now, you know, we have to constantly remind them. Because sometimes it seems that our country is very badly backslidden. So we must keep reminding them. Okay. Are you going to court? I don't know. That is an honest answer. The giving up answer question comes back again. It's not about Look, giving if, up. It's if, also about being strategic. You know, let right. me. It's, it's also about being strategic because... Mm -hmm. It is clear that this is, it's not a legal problem. Mm. It's a political problem. It's actually a political problem. Now, you can't solve political problems in court. It is, uh, it's, a, it's, a poli it's, a, it's, a, it's a definitely a rule of law issue, but it's more steeped in the impunity of the political class. But excuse me, madam. The constitution, the legal supreme law of the yes. country, seeks to solve that political problem. 
But how, how many court orders are we going to get? Oh, no, no, but no. the constitution has addressed that. Wrong with it. The con- that's why the constitution came and fixed the number. Hmm. 22 yes. plus AG plus DP plus president. Cabinet complete. Then comes up with two thirds and it says draw a pie chart s- divided into three, two, one. Daisy. Put when, blue here, put pink there. Do not move. <laughs> when we started talking about this, this two-third gender rule, yeah. remember, we were far, mm. very, very far from it. Very far. And most people didn't even bother. Mm. But look at what the Constitution did. First mm. of all, women's rep. You have numbers. Mm. Now we have more and more women actually being elected. Absolutely. <laughs> because people understood why they saw women in positions of leadership and what they could do. It made it easier. Yes. Progress is being made by every state. You see, now we are discussing the two-third gender rule, but look at the fine points. Mm. Yeah, you know, they, they are, these are the three who are appointed. Mm. So in totality, yes, it would meet it, but they are not really cabinet. Now, you see, we've made some huge strides. Absolutely. Before this was in the discussion. It, it, that's true. And, and that's what we must appreciate. And that's what I'm saying that if when you look at it from a strategic point of view, mm. going to courts will just antagonize the situation. OK, because I don't think Mr. President will withdraw his mm. list. OK, but there are other promises that he has made, for instance, that within 90 days he is going to implement. He's going to ensure that the two thirds gender principle is in place. We can pursue that because it is still it remains in abeyance. Article 100 has not been implemented. Article 81. So there are legislative actions that can be taken that can move us even that much more closer. We have women in cabinet, Mm. the substantive uh, uh, CS for public service and gender, with whom we can work to move the president in the right direction and get other benefits that have been promised to us that will ensure by the time we get to 2027 we have those numbers you know so i think that so the strategy here is compromise win some lose it's some not, it's, keep it, pushing it, yes we just keep live, pushing live because i honestly don't think going to court is going to you is going to yield you know, anything other than more court orders it will be on record what i was trying to say all along is that if you look at the effort that is being made it's a stride it's not a step mm. okay if we forget the legal aspects and just look at just numbers of women in a certain position, mm. it is a huge step. I agree. I agree, 100%. Yes. So sometimes, yeah. the legal issues are all good and well. They're mm. a reference point. And okay. they're a platform from which to judge things. Yes. 100 minus 21? 79. Okay, 79 days to go. <laughs> To the 100 days oh. of the William Ruto administration. And then we see whether all those things, that they are the promise that he has made, will be fulfilled. On the 101th day, come. And we can have a different and discussion. We'll, we'll have another conversation. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Daisy Yadma Amdani is a executive director of Crown Trust. She's been here with us. Keep it here for more conversations coming up in the next hour.